So in this video, I'm going to be looking at questions 9 to 13 of the test. Harry invests £5,000 for three years and he gets simple interest of 4% per year. Work out total the total interest. So for simple interest, you're not using an increase multiplier. You are simply using 0.044% of 5000 that's the interest, and he gets that every year, always 4% of 5,000. So it's 5,000 times 0 0.04 times 3, because he gets it three times. 5,000 times 0 0.04 times 3, and we get 600 pounds. That is the interest, 600 pounds. If they had said, work out the total value of the investment, you would have added 600 to 5,000. Question 10. A school has 840 pupils and 40 teachers. Find the ratio of the number of pupils, so number of pupils, to the number of teachers. So pupils first, teachers second. 840 pupils. 40 teachers and it says give your ratio in the form n to 1 that means 1 is here and n is the number I'm trying to find to go from 40 to 1 I divide by 40 which means I do exactly the same on the other side so 840 divided by 40 is 21 so it's 21 uh, pupils to every one teacher. In year 11, at the school, the ratio of the number of pupils who study chemistry to the number who study physics is 3 to 2. So in order, chemistry first, then physics. Chemistry, physics, 3 to 2. 105 pupils in year 11 study chemistry. Work out the number of pupils in year 11 who study physics. So 105 study chemistry, so I put it in the chemistry column. And I try to find out what do I need to multiply by 3 to give me 105. If you're not sure, you would do 105 divided by 3. So that's times 35, which means if I want to find how many study physics, I would multiply by 35. 2 times 35 is 70. So 70 pupils study physics. For the 105 pupils who study chemistry, the ratio of the number of boys to the number of girls, so boys to girls, is 4 to 3. Work out the number of girls in year 11. So 105, this is not one of them, it's not boys, it's not girls, it's all of them. So really, I need to divide 105 by that ratio. And the first thing I do is add four boys to every three girls. That means seven people altogether. So 105 divided by seven. And that gives me 15. And there are three times 15 girls which is 45. So the number of girls who study chemistry is 45. So you first add the ratios, divide 105 by that total, and then because you're only find, finding girls, you would do 3 times 15. And question 11. A boat um, has been bought for 160,000 Hong Kong dollars. The value of the boat depreciates, that means decreases, loses value, by 4%. So I need a multiplier for the decrease of 4%, which is 100%, minus 4%, which is 96%, which is 0 0.96. So to find the value of the boat at the end of three years, you would multiply 160,000 by 0 0.96, so 160,000 times 0 0.96, and it's to the power of 3, because it's for 3 years. So to the power of 3 equals. 
and it wants it correct to the nearest dollar. So I have 0.7, and this 7 rounds the 7 before the decimal up to an 8, to 141,558. And this says Jelena gets a salary increase of 5%. Her salary after the increase is 252,000. Work out Jelena's salary before the increase. So this is the situation we have. We have an original salary that we don't know. That original salary went up by 5%. So we need a multiplier, an increase multiplier. So 100% plus 5% is 105%, which is 1.05. So it was multiplied by 1.05, and we get our new salary, which we know is 252,000. So we need to reverse this, so we are working backwards. And all we need to do is to reverse the multiplication and make it into a division. The numbers stay exactly the same. We don't change the numbers at all. 252,000 divided by 1.05. 252,000 divided by 1.05. So that is 240,000. Okay. Sarah makes and sells mugs. One day she makes 150 mugs. Her total cost for making these mugs is 1,140. Two-fifths are small mugs. So that's two-fifths of 150, which is two-fifths times 150, is small mugs. 32%, 0 0.32 of 150 is medium and the rest is large. So, two-fifth times 150 is 60 mugs are small. 0 0.32 times 150, 48 mugs, the rest. So, there's 150 altogether. I need to add these two, so that gives me 108. And I need to subtract from 150, and that gives me 42 mugs are large. And then she's going to sell them. And these are the prices that she sells them for. So we need to know how much um, income she made, how much revenue she made. 60 times 8.5. 48 mugs are sold for £11.20. And 42 mugs are sold for £14.20. So 60 times 8.5. Okay, 48 times 11.2. 537 pounds and 60 pence. And 42 times 14.2 is 596 pounds and 40 pence. Okay, then we need to add them because we need to find the total amount of money she made. 1,644. But that's not the end of the question. It says work out her percentage profit. That's percentage change. So First thing you need to do is find the difference between the money she made and the cost of making the mugs. So we find the difference, the change, 1,644 um, minus 1,140. And then you need to divide by the cost, by the original, 1,140. 1,140 and times by 100 because you are finding the percent. So I'm finding the difference between the two numbers. I'm dividing by the cost, by the original, and then I'm multiplying by 100 
and it says give your answer correct to the nearest whole number. Well, 44.2 is 44%. And then question 13 is a question asking for the upper bound of P. Well, what is P? P is made up of a division. T minus W divided by Y. Now, you actually get marks simply for listing the upper and lower bounds for all of these numbers. So, T is 9.7. If you add a 0 and look at this as a 70, the upper bound becomes 9.75. The lower bound is 9.65. W is 5.9. Do the same. Add a 0. Makes it a 90. That means the upper bound is 5.95. And the lower bound is um, 5.85. And y is 3, that's to one significant figure, to the nearest whole number. So whole number means the upper bound is going to be 3.5, and the lower bound is going to be 2.5. You get marks just for listing these. Okay, well you get one mark for listing this. And then you are going to look at the division. How do I find the upper bound of a division? Well, you would do upper bound divided by lower bound. So what's the upper bound of? The upper bound is the upper bound of a subtraction. The lower bound is only one thing, so it's the lower bound of y. I then need to give some attention to the subtraction. How do I find the upper bound of a subtraction? Well, to do that, I need the upper bound of the first number, which is t, take away the lower bound of the second number, which is w. And all of that is divided by the lower bound of y. But I have all of these numbers who do upper bound divided by lower bound. So what's the upper bound of? The upper bound is the upper bound of a subtraction. The lower bound is only one thing, so it's the lower bound of y. I then need to give some attention to the subtraction. How do I find the upper bound of a subtraction? Well, to do that, I need the upper bound of the first number, which is t, take away the lower bound of the second number, which is w. And all of that is divided by the lower bound of y. But I have all of these numbers, so I can just substitute in. The upper bound of t is 9.75. Minus the lower bound of w is 5.85. And divided by the lower bound of y, which is 2.5. And then I get my calculator, my fraction button, and I put my numbers in. And it's 1.56. They haven't asked you to round. It's only two decimal places. Don't round. 1.56. And that brings us to the end of the test.